Yes. Thank you, Ms. Moisson. Good evening um, to our group and welcome also to any of our community members who may be logging in on this meeting. We are calling this meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. on April 7th, 2021. We have a quorum and I'd like to quickly go to our roll call, if you please. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Here. Welcome. Ms. Owen. Here. Ms. Walker. Here. Mr. Cage. Here. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Bachelman and Ms. Moisson, always for being here with your busy schedules. We appreciate your attendance and, and support. Uh, just going to go forward with um, our first order of business, which is to approve the minutes of the 2017-21 and 3-24-21 uh, 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 meetings, which were uh, given to us last week, and we've had time to review those, and I'd like to bring that forward for approval. Uh, in doing so, I'd like to start the discussion by first uh, moving to the move the move the approval of the minutes of the 17th and if someone would second that then I'll entertain any questions can you guys see them yeah okay so I'd like to move that we approve the minutes of the 17th of February I'd welcome second. second thank you Mr. Vernon Jones any uh questions comments, discussions on those minutes from any of our members. Okay. Welcome, Ms. Pat. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good. Um, not hearing any comments. Um, I'd like to move that we approve the minutes of the 17th. May I hear a second? I second that. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Uh, all those in favor, just raise your hand. Thank you. The minutes of the 17th have been approved. Uh, now we'll go to the minutes of March 24th. Uh, I'd like to move that those minutes also be approved. Uh, may I hear a second? May I hear a second, please, for the purpose of discussion? I second. Thank you, Mr. Cage. Um, the uh, motion to approve has been uh, moved and seconded. Any comments, questions uh, on those set of minutes from our group? Welcome, Ms. Ferreira. Hello. Okay. Okay, seeing, seeing no comments or contributions at this time, I'd like to move that we uh, approve the minutes of March 24th, 2021. Um, may I hear a second? Seconded. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, all those in favor, just see, raise your hand so I can see you. Thank you very much. Okay, those minutes have been uh, approved. Thank you all very much. Um, our meeting th today is going to, uh, in addition to the approval of the minutes which we just did, uh, we're gonna open it up to public comment um, in a moment. And as always, we welcome those in attendance to um, offer their comments to, to the uh, Community Safety Working Group as you see fit. And we usually reserve about 15 minutes for that. It seems to be sufficient for those comments from folks. 
Um, in addition, I would like to uh, open uh, a moment for our community safety working group to, before entering our, our action and discussion items to comment on any things that are on their mind coming into the meeting or any experiences since the last meeting that they wanna share that informs our work. And then we're going into two um, items on our agenda. One being the uh, weekly uh, discussion with our consultant, Seven Generations um, Movement Collective, who are here weekly with us to give an update on their progress. And we have an, an interaction certainly around that uh, as our work continues. And then we're going to continue our discussion on the topic of the community responders. Well, we started that discussion a while back, several meetings ago, and we're going a little deeper today into uh, delving into some of the responses to questions that we've created uh, within a, a particular grid and, and time and grid and framework. So hopefully we will spend a bulk of our time on that a particular topic. Um, after that, certainly we have our upcoming events as usual, our, we'll set our next meeting date. And um, if there are any topics that haven't become before the chair be, uh, in, within 48 hours of this meeting, we will bring those up at that time and then we'll move to adjourn. So given that as our meeting, I'd like to just move forward into public comment and uh, Ms. Moyston, please, if you um, able to recognize any folks in our attendee list who would like to speak, we would welcome that at this time. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Vincent O'Connor. And if, if it's appropriate at this occasion, I'd like to make a few comments. It is. OK, thank you. Um, First, about the trial of uh, former Officer Slovin in, um, in Minneapolis, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ask the, the committee to focus on any particular aspect of that trial, but on the, the um, extraordinary amount of public resources that has gone into the effort um, to attempt to convict the, uh, uh, this individual police officer of the crime, which you know, seems pretty much everyone who's viewed the thing believes he committed. And, and therein, I think, lies a serious problem because the fact that the effort has been so extraordinary and well-funded indicates what the problem is um, that we have. Um, in um, achieving accountability. Um, the, the second comment is, um, has to do with the need to create an entirely new department, as I've said before, um, with a civilian head having a an armed and an unarmed component of public safety and our community safety. And my, my concern remains that under the current um, contractual relationship um, that the town of Amherst has with the um, a police union, and, and which is not an extraordinary contract, I'm sure it mirrors many things that are in many contracts for police unions all over the country. But um, it, it is a serious problem to have the disciplinary procedures that involve such individuals be subject to collective bargaining and and really unchangeable unless the department itself is abolished and a new department is established with new rules 
and the town is takes a certain position in terms of uh, disciplinary activities that will ensure that a repetition of some of the act, some of the complained of activities by the public in Amherst are not repeated and I have plenty of stories, but I'm not going to tell them. But it, I, I think the committee has heard enough, and some of the members of the committee have experienced enough to know that there needs to be a change in the disciplinary procedures in such a way that it is not a collective bargaining process, but the, re the establishment of a new department with new rules. Anyway, and, and I would just encourage the members of the committee to go to the, um, the podcasts of WHMP. Um, Bill Newman last Friday interviewed three members of the Northampton uh, Committee, which is established for similar purposes as this committee. And I thought that their comments were uh, very um, informative and useful, and I would encourage the members of this this working group to um, to go to that podcast and um, and listen to what the Northampton members had to say. So thank you very much. Are there other comments, Ms. Moyston? No other hands are raised at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will respectfully move forward and, and thank the, uh, our community member for um, uh, that particular contribution and continue to contribute continue to encourage all other members of our community to participate in our deliberations as a community safety working group. Um, welcome, Ms. Bowen. I just see you on the screen as we were waiting, as we were listening to the public comment. Welcome. And I'd like to now just take a moment and check in with our group as a whole to see if any members um, have any reports for us that they'd like to share at this time. Mr. Vernon Jones. Just to let you know that uh, Ms. Pat and I wrote to the executive directors of both the Chamber of Commerce and the bid in Amherst and invited them to meet with us to share thoughts they had about the, the police uh, in Amherst and their need and their interest in needs. And uh, <clears throat> we've gotten a positive response back from one of them are waiting to hear from the other one. Thank you. Thank you very much, both of you, for your ongoing work. Um, others? Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, just a quick comment. Obviously, I think I know we're all, um, you know, witnessing the trial that's going on right now. And, you know, of course, as, as the, the community member, uh, Mr. Vince O'Connor already spoke about, you know, there's the, just the tremendous resources going into it. And the fact that, again, it just seems like uh, George Floyd is on trial at times mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around. Um, but also I was reminded again, just because of the reading that, that we do and something came across about, I guess there was a lawsuit that just came in in, in California, California, obviously not Massachusetts, but in California in terms of a teen who was beaten um, excessively by the police. Um, this happened, I guess, uh, December 30th, 2020. Uh, this teen is 17 years old, you know, black male. Uh, and they're, uh, they're filing a lawsuit against the uh, police department there. You know, obviously I have a 17 year old. Um, you know, just again, just for another reminder about, you know, the, the work that we're doing and how important it is and, and critical it is. At, at, age time, at, at this point in time. Thank, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, let's see here, I'm moving some things around on my screen again here.
Any other comments? Call from teacher F. Sorry if there's any hand raised at that point. I was trying to detox my environment here. It's, it's still pretty busy. Um, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, if there are no others, I, I did have one comment I wanted to make before we uh, go forward. And it's just a, uh, it's a complimentary thing as well as uh, uh, an acknowledgement. I, I did notice, and I think um, some of you may have done the same, uh, that our, our, one of our consultants, uh, Dr. Shabazz, uh, along with her colleagues, uh, recently won an award from the National Association for Multi-Ethnicity in Communications, uh, the New England chapter. And so just as you know, we're reading around, we le read a lot of things that, that are not always good news, but I just wanted to share that because I think it also uh, shows the, the depth and breadth of not only who we're working with, but what they are doing. And um, she's also joined certainly by, by her husband and partner, uh, Dr. Amokar Shabazz. So I just wanted to congratulate them on their, on, on their award, uh, on their award and um, you know, hopefully, uh, Dr. Shabazz, you may say something about that in your presentation. So uh, we all appreciate you. Thank you very much. And any other comments? I do have one other thing, but I'll, I'll see if there's any other comments. Tashina has her hand raised. Okay, I don't see the hand. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Bowman, there she is. Yeah. All right, uh, hold on. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. All right, so I have a, I actually have a question mm -hmm. um, for, it's for Mr. Bachelman. Um, I want to, um, Benji, I have, I'm, stop, please, okay? I am, I am question, oh, how do I say this? I would like you to explain, like I, wa I watched the presentation to the, the town committee um, regarding our group. And I really walked away with it with, a, with kind of a bad feeling. And I don't feel, I, like, I feel like you're being wishy-washy and you're going back and forth between these two committees and you're not giving really anybody a, uh, an answer it feels like you're giving people what they want to hear and i really want you to explain like the conversation that you had with the the, the committee on monday I'm hungry. um yeah i just want you to i want to i want a, a deeper explanation because i don't at this point right now i just i'm very skeptical skeptical <laughs> about um what you're doing and whether or not you actually really support this group. Okay, hey, thank you, Ms. Bowman. I just, I, um, as this is our, just our opening comment, I'd like to uh, keep that present, that, that question, Ms. Uh, Mr. Bachelman. Um, uh, if you have a brief answer for it now, that's fine. If not, I'd, I'd like to uh, move us forward into our agenda because we have our folks coming in to present and they have about a half an hour but uh, that's right. an important I, question to answer for, for yeah, Ms. Bowman. I, really I want to be like sure that we have it. I really feel like I I go back to the question as why as to why am I here? I understand. And so I feel yeah. like before I go for like before I go forward, I really need to have this answered because what I heard and when I listened to it was that you weren't planning to put through things that we were we were going to suggest that you weren't going to put and I, and what I want to quote is that you weren't going to put everything through so what does that mean you get to pick and choose what gets put through and what doesn't get put through like I mean you know 
two weeks ago, you told us we had no money. Like, it just, it seems like there's this pattern here where you're telling us, you're like, yeah, we have this group, but we're not really going to do anything about it, but we're going to try to look good by having this, you know, all this work done. It, it's, it, I have, a, it just doesn't feel right to me. Understood. And I, and I think we, you know, we can, we can try to make room for that, Mr. Bachelman, in, in terms of answering. Um, I, you know, as this is a question coming from the committee, that's important mm -hmm. uh, to one of our committee members. If you might want to do a, a prelude answer right now, fine. Sure. Um, but then we can go back to it in the body of our, our work because we, you know, we have a, a set thing that we're doing also that's going to be taking uh, a lot of our time and may focus on some of what, what you, mm -hmm. you may say or what uh, Ms. Bowman is talking about. Sure. So can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so um, I have a role as the town manager. This is an executive responsibility. This group was formed as an advisory committee to the town manager. It doesn't mean that I support what I have. It's, I'm not in a supportive role. I'm here supportive of you in, in terms of you know staff support so you can do the work that you feel is important. Then you provide a body of uh, advice to me as town manager. And then I have to make an independent judgment about what I present to the town council you also will be presenting your full um, presentation to the town council. I hope that you'll be willing to do that. So yeah, I, I think what I was saying is that um, I have to make a judgment as an independent executive for the town that may or may not be the same as what the working group is advising. Thank you. And I think as we, we get into the body of our work today, we are going to be talking about uh, a couple of things. One, uh, the, the work we're doing around CRESS, and there, there will be certainly some recommendations coming out of that. And um, also, we're going to be hearing from our, uh, our consultant group who are coming back to us with updates and reports. And I just want to remind everyone, our audience, as well as our group, that our, our job is to present a compelling and uh, meaningful and effective proposal uh, for programs and budgets to the town manager. So we have, we have a huge charge before us and we have to make sure we get that on your desk, Mr. Town Manager, and so that you can um, be able to fully see where we're trying to go as a group. So, uh, Let's not lose that that thought and thank you for your response and I, I would like to move forward and invite our um, our consultant group um, into the into the picture here into the meeting and I want to preface their entry in addition to saying welcome to them all uh, for agreeing to uh, about a half an hour uh, maybe 32 minutes if they need it. <laughs> I uh, did have a communication with uh, Dr. Shabazz um, and the group does know that we have a, a lot on our agenda today to discuss about uh, CRESS. So I appreciate their willingness to, to flex on this and also appreciate their willingness to, to come in and report to us on a weekly basis. Um, the last thing I wanna say is I want to uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bachman. I, uh, so late this afternoon, the email about what's going on with Northampton and that resource. So, um, you know, thank you uh, for that going forward. So, um, Ms. Moisten, we're all in, right? Yes. I'd like to acknowledge then uh, Dr. Shabazz, uh, and of the Seven Generations Movement Collective and turn it over to them for their update for us. Thank you for being here. Hello? Hi. 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 Okay, we're not on screen. That's that's fine if we just want to listen to us. Um, hello, everyone. Um, you know, we are, just to kind of preface, we are in the midst, like you all, of watching what is going on on the national stage, but also doing this work in the community where um, we are, are you know, listening to these narratives about policing in our own community. Um, I just wanna commend the 7Gen group in doing this work 
uh, under under that uh, emotional and uh, psychological and uh, national um, time of, of really a crisis of where we're trying to figure out um, what we uh, policing and being policed right within our communities because we we're people of color we're part of the marginalized communities many of us so um i totally uh empathize and uh am with you uh as we go through this nationally uh we all are at seven gen um with that said um before we begin I want to just ask about this chamber meeting. And since there'll be two of you, from what I understand, that will have this meeting, if it won't be recorded, could one of the seven gens sit in to simply listen? Because I, I think it would be helpful to hear from the business community um, about what they're envisioning uh, or not envisioning in terms of policing. So uh, if, if that's a possibility. Um, and then, I want to um, make sure that within our discussions, um, we are adhering to our timelines and things like that. So we're first gonna hear from our part B, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, our part A group mm -hmm. with uh, Katie. Sanji, you're here as well. Thank you so much. So Sanji and Katie will talk a little bit about where they are with part A. And then Terry will talk a little bit about where we are with part B. Again, we're trying to make this very concise uh, and within the 30 minute time frame because I know you all have a lot on your plate for tonight. Um, and then lastly, I want to support Tashina and the CSWG in um, these conversations with the town because like we value your work and I know we were hired to do a job, the people in the community value your work. And so um, it's important to ask these very critical questions around accountability. So thank you very much, uh, Katie and Sanji. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Um, I will start um, and then I invite Dr. Johnson Anderson to um, pipe up, pipe in whenever. Um, I just, I just want to say that in making decisions in my own life, I always assess what I can bring to the table and um, my position in various things. Um, coming into this work, I'm very familiar with the fact that I am a white researcher um, doing work with the BIPOC community. Um, and I have done a lot of exploration around looking at my identity in uh, race related research. It is um, a responsibility of mine as a white researcher to make sure that the people who are involved in this research end up being represented and end up um, experiencing justice. I'm going to present um, a brief PowerPoint presentation. It is going to show you some of the images from the trial that people are referencing. It's a hot topic in our nation, obviously. Um, and that's kind of our centering it's where we are right now in terms of a nation, but there was a lot of parallels that came up with our most recent uh, meeting with the community ambassadors just this past Monday in talking with them about their experiences doing outreach. Um, I'm a little bit shaky because I'm emotional around this work. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna share some images and I wanna warn you if you're triggered by them, feel free to you know, close your eyes or whatnot. Um, they're just of people who we might have seen on, you know, television or in the news if we've been following the, um, the trial. So these are images from the past week. And this idea of having to relive trauma through testimony by testifying um, on behalf of George Floyd, um, is is prominent 
and we see the emotion that this brings. Um, this is Christopher Martin, age 19. He is the storekeeper who, um, you know, thinks back to how he, the guilt he has to live with and the guilt he's had to revisit as a result of him being the storekeeper and um, noticing that the $20 bill was counterfeit. He lives with the guilt and thinks back, like, I could have changed it. I could have changed it, right? And he's asked to relive that as he's um, testifying. This is Donald Williams, one of the um, people who witnessed the murder, um, who's noted for saying, I called the police on the police. We have various minors who have had to testify these past few weeks who were um, stripped of their childhood in the moment, but are asked again to recollect and share their experiences of the trauma they experienced and continue to experience. And um, one of the cousins of, of that nine-year-old girl, uh, Darnella Frazier, <sighs> lives with the trauma on a daily basis, you know, apologizing and apologizing to George Floyd for not doing more and not physically interacting and not saving his life. She was the person who documented. So we see that George Floyd was not the only victim and we see the ongoing victimization of BIPOC community, both directly by police, but the community members as well through that trickle effect of what policing does to their community, right? These children will not have a life that a child without that trauma will experience, right? This is something they are carrying with them for the rest of their life. The, the, the bystanders, the onlookers, every, everyone who was part of that community and it extends, you know, miles and miles um, nationwide, you know, it's, it's, we're not there, but, you know, people feel it. And um, I know just in speaking with people locally, it's just as traumatizing, despite our distance. So I want to start with that, um, because I think it really does center the impact that reliving trauma can really do. So on Monday, we um, had our final meeting, final formalized meeting with our six community ambassadors just this past Monday. And one of our general questions to them was, what was this process like? And we have um, a lot of data to go through um, and I'm only going to share a snippet of not even the data from the community members per se, but just a little snippet of what we talked about on Monday with the community ambassadors. And the theme that was talked about was the difficulty in recruiting participants. Now I want to preface this by saying our ambassadors have done a tremendous work and they have reached you know, their quota, if we wanna put a quota word on it. They have done their work you know, in this past week, they've reached out to so many people um, and I'll get into that. But it was not without difficulty. And one of the themes or one of, one of a strong sense of feedback that they provided um, was the fear that people have just in talking about this um, and talking about their experiences with the police. And I think this is summarized by someone who said, can I do the interview after I get my citizenship? This was a community member who one of the ambassadors had reached out to in hoping that you know they would share their story. Um, we don't know how long it is until they get their citizenship. We don't know if that's next week or three years from now, but that just shows a little bit of, or it, it demonstrates the fear that people have. And that's just one, one quote that shows that, but 
this kept coming through, right, in various fashions. Um, the recruitment process. One of the questions we asked our community ambassadors was, um, in order to, you know, interview your seven people, how many people did you need to reach out to? And, you know, some people said, you know, 10 or 11 people, meaning, you know, three or four people said no. But we had upwards of some people needing to reach out to 17 people, which means 10 people said no to talking about their experiences with the police. Some people went as far as interviewing, right? We had one community ambassador report that, you know, the day of the interview, they were very open. They were very transparent. They shared these stories. But the next day they came to me and they, they postured differently. They positioned themselves differently. And they essentially said, can I take that back, right? And we need to discredit that particular interview because it's no longer, you know, consented by the participant. Um, but something happened between the time that they talked about it and then reflecting on talking about it and thinking, wait a minute, is this worth it or am I more at risk for talking? A community ambassador kind of summarized it by, by saying, we shouldn't have this fear of talking, right? There shouldn't even be an issue. People should be able to, to share their stories and feel like you know, their stories won't, they won't be retaliated by just sharing their stories, which is why we're being so um, vigilant about keeping people um, anonymous and protecting them. So we have this bunch of participants who have shared their story. And now I see it as my responsibility. Um, and I, I would imagine my colleagues do as well, um, doing the research on this topic. It's our job to do justice to this, to this work and making sure that the trauma, these participants had to relive trauma, right? By sharing their stories and they put themselves out there. And the question is for what, right? which is why it's our responsibility and which is why, you know, I want to support Ms. Ms. Bowman in, you know, what she brought up. We can't, we can't do more disservice to this group who has already um, been traumatized, right? As the stories, you know, as a lot of the data will show based on what um, the fear factor already shows. Um, we need to support these initiatives, whatever they, you know, whatever is presented. We need to support this community. We have money in the budget, right? There's always money in the budget. It's a matter of how we choose to spend the money in the budget and what our priorities are. And so I'm inviting, you know, the community, um, the CSWG members, the town manager, town council members, you know, to commit to making this change. Um, because honestly, at this point, we need to value and hold up the stories that were shared with us and um, make change accordingly. Because if not, we're just re-traumatizing and re-victimizing the people who shared their stories. And I will, um, I'll give Sanji the, the floor if you have things to add, Sanji. Thank you, Katie. Um, I just wanted to add to that, the, I, uh, I'm one of those persons who has become greatly re-traumatized by having to experience again. And I, I, I uh, avoid it as much as I can listening to the, the trial of George Floyd and would like for the CSWG, certainly the, our town manager and others to appreciate that the 
the research that we're doing, this work um, has us kind of walking a tightrope of at one at once and together being targeted um, by um, the experiences of um, with our police and being the ones to to write about it, to to research it, to report on it. Um, and so, you know, as Katie mentioned, extracting these stories from community members has been for many of them a very painful and re-traumatizing uh, experience. Um, these stories represent people's lives. These stories represent um, the, 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 the idea that people have about themselves and in the community ambassadors recounting of um, speaking with community members about their experience. Um, another of the prevailing themes that, that, that came up is about the fear that um, community members generally have um, for the police and the fact that they also want to the, 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 the fact that they are not seen or their humanity is not recognized um, in a way that, that, that that's the, they are seen as members of the community who are valuable, who are worthy of respect and, um, and should be treated as such. And so in order to extract again these stories, we have had to establish uh, rapport with these people and trust. And we certainly would not like to sit with um, the community members, um, establishing rapport with them and uh, saying to them that we are doing this with the view to bringing about meaningful change, that they have chosen to become re-traumatized uh, and then to no avail. So, so many of them are very worried about that. And we want to present that to you, to your group, so that you are aware of where community members' thoughts are regarding um, actually putting themselves up in this way, um, putting their stories out there and taking this kind of risk. Uh, we would like for the group and those who are in the seat of the decision makers to appreciate that and not just to appreciate it, but to seek to do something meaningful about it. Uh, this is not where we are, is not a good place in our nation. And um, on, on the level of the town, trying to address an issue, um, we would just want to, um, encourage you to, to be courageous about what has to be done. Um, our community members have been really, really, uh, they have suffered. And, and um, you will hear more about this when we are able to put forth a formal report to you, but just want you to know from the, at the very outset that this is what we are getting. And um, even the people collecting the stories, it has been a, a, a re-traumatizing experience for them because it has brought up for them many of the, their own experiences, even things that they thought that they had forgotten about came roaring to the surface. And, and so we want to present that to you so that you are aware that as we delve deeper into the data and what it will yield, um, these are the things that we see coming to the surface uh, already. Thank you. Thank you, Sanji and Katie. In respect of your, your time, um, I know Terry uh, had something to present, but I'm going to ask Terry, is that something if, if they need to move on um, that you can write up a short synopsis and send it to the group? Yes, I could do that. Thank you. I think it was important to hear you know, fresh out of uh, the group for part A, uh, what mm -hmm. they've been doing. That was, um, 
obviously very important and very timely. So um, again, Sanji and Katie, because you're in the midst of this, thank you so much. So Paul, I'm going to yield to you all because uh, I know we have taken up quite a bit of time, but I, I thought it was important and we all thought it was important that you understand uh, what we have thus far uh, and, and what the process was like. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. And, and I do want to take some liberty. I, I know I asked for 30 minutes and uh, thank you so much, you and the, um, and the consultant um, collective for agreeing to that. Uh, I want to respect uh, Terry Mullen's time. Um, Terry, you did show up here as well. I, I think the, the, the group would welcome your voice in this in, in advance of anything you want to send us afterward. But I, I would, I would, and I think I'm speaking on behalf of the group, I'd love to hear what you have to offer. Um, all of this work is important. And um, I, I don't want to have you come on screen and spend your time here without hearing your voice and what you may have to offer right now. So please do so and then we'll, we'll move on from there. And thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Johnson Anderson for uh, coming with this information tonight. It's extremely important for us to hear as, as a group. So, so Terry? Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Riley. And I, personally, I am always happy to yield time to these stories. Um, I would have gladly sat and waited um, for more conversation at the beginning too. So um, just my update is uh, just to remind you, we're looking at four services, um, youth services, peer specialist services, community responder services, and police review boards, um, which I believe Dr. Shabazz uh, presented last time. Um, and we're looking at them specifically with the idea of what it would look like for the town of Amherst to do that. So part of our goal is to look at the budget, is to look at the financial decisions, and is to try to help the CSWG and the town on a, on a whole uh, understand kind of where things might be able to change um, and what restructuring might need to, might need to happen um, if some of these services uh, seem suggestible. So at after a deep dive into youth services and peer specialist models. Um, so that's things like um, youth programming, potentially longer school days is something that uh, comes up a lot. Um, uh, basically supervision um, and also culturally sensitive supervision. Um, there we've been, I've been reading some studies um, that show even therapy based on cultural differences and respectful of cultural differences can actually have a lot a bigger impact and things of that nature. So combining that with youth services and specializations being um, also very well founded and backed up, uh, you can see a, a possible model to think about. Um, police review boards um, are generally less effective, even those um, with subpoena power and even those that are as strong as the review board can fire um, a chief of police with um, due cause don't seem to lower, um, I don't want to use the word perceptions of injustices, but I'm going to say injustices, that's kind of um, my reading of the of the research and they don't seem uh, to be as effective as one might have uh, originally hoped um, but we can we'll go through and and talk about what uh, that would look like for Amherst with the current contracts and things of that nature um, and just overall uh, the community responder models which I'm excited to hear you talk about later. Um, uh, seem to have promising uh, money returns uh, in terms of rerouting calls and can be more effective. We are looking into kind of, do they produce the same harms that um, we hear uh, about in the police? Are they actually present, preventing those harms? Kind of like, what is the 
uh, kind of trying to think about the goal of a change. Like, are we kind of how to frame it? Um, and then basically an overall theme in the services that we are reviewing is an initial investment will be necessary um, and there will be some restructuring necessary. We're hoping to get into some of the details on that uh, in the report. Um, and then another big theme is um, some continued ev evaluation and continued um, support uh, over time should should also be baked into any changes um, made. Thank so, you. And I just want to thank the CSWG for, for all the work that you're doing. And, and just honestly, the, I don't know, I'm just always so happy to be in your presence. So thank you all. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I'll send that report. It's mutual. Thank you, thank you Jerry. Group. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Dr. Shabazz, go no, right ahead. No, please, because Terry I'll... needs to know how Terry has done a lot of our tech work as well. And, um, just a, a really amazing human being. So um, please. <laughs> that, that's why I invited Terry into this conversation. I wasn't going to have him just run off into the evening without okay. saying anything <laughs> and leave us hanging here with this bated breath waiting to hear from him. I appreciate that, Paul. One last thing, Terry, and I know you you kind of hinted at it, but I think it's important to to bring to this group. One of the things that we've been looking at with Part B um is that what is the intentionality i guess in terms of of the research as we look at policing and the shifting of uh resources into alternative models of public safety let's say of community safety is it for the police to and it has more to do with the conversation around community policing is it the police to be more in the community or is it for the community uh, to take up some of the policing? And with both of those uh, kind of ideological directions, there are problems and, and of course pluses. And so I don't know if that conversation has been fully fleshed out by your group, but it, it does pertain to the different models that we're looking at, having uh, police in the community, right? And, and what that looks like to have them a more part of the community as mm. police, um, as opposed to people in the community and social services within the community to take up some of that community safety, public safety role. So um, that's, that's something you know, I don't know where you all want to deposit that within your conversations, but these are things as as we look at these models, uh, we keep coming uh, back to. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Shabazz, and and thank you all, all of you for on on the, um, um, the the Seven Generations Movement Collective for your your work. Um, I do have a question that I, I, I wanna just put out there, but I, I really don't want an answer right now because we have to enter into our discussions right now. But I'd like maybe for the next uh, meeting that we have, if you can give us a sense too of how, uh, I can just ask one question before I say this. Uh, are your ambassadors BIPOC people? My, my question for you to respond to next meeting, um, would be how are you supporting BIPOC people as ambassadors in doing this work? Because we can't, we we cannot assume that they are not being re-traumatized in some ways by even asking the questions that are going on. And we have to have that that kind of support available to them. So it's it's not a quiz question. It's just like if you thought about it, what you're thinking on it how can we work together to support uh, those folks who are doing the work for us? And um, that's just to put it in our agenda. for. Well, just person. real quick, long-term, I think it is something we can put into the agenda and talk about in the short term. We did, we have someone on contract and I think I had mentioned that last week yes. um, as um, a, a therapist, a, a mental health professional, 
um, to, to be able to call on within uh, this period of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for joining us tonight. And um, I'm sure if, we, if some questions come out of our discussion, we'll collect those and forward them to you. And uh, Dr. Shabazz, as you and I are communicating during the week as point people on this, um, in keeping Ms. Moisten in the loop, we will uh, certainly make sure that the group is aware of our conversations as well. Uh, yeah, Ms. Ferreira, yeah. <laughs> Ms. Ferreira be, before we move on, thank you. No, I mean, I just wanted to, to just kind of put it out there too, in terms of things is that, you know, just for the seven uh, generations for them to, I'm sure they, they, they might be aware of this, that we're obviously looking at very quickly uh, coming to that time to, to share um, information with the town manager in terms of the budget, because the budget has to be in by May 1st. So just to kind of keep, because I know you all had kind of mentioned that in terms of deadlines and things like that. And, and I think everything that, you know, Terry, you know, part A, part B, all, all, everything that you all are doing are going to come into play for that. So I think for the next meeting to kind of keep, you know, that in mind to kind of share with us whatever is more pressing, because we're going to be making those decisions very quickly, right? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you Thank all next you. week. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So... Thank you all, we're, we're all back together. I'm gonna to move quickly to, to this next piece that we have about our, our CREST discussion. And um, Ms. Moisten, are you able to, to put that document up that was created by, um, by Ms. Ferreira and, and me for the group? Are you able to see it? I have lots of screens open. Hold on. So sorry. That's okay. Mr. Mr. Wiley, um, yeah. Ms. Walker has her hand up. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've got I've got multiple screens. I'm sorry, Ms. Walker. I it just it's hard to see the without faces. I apologize. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Go ahead. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to bring the conversation back, if possible, to um, to Sheena's prior comment, I know that we have a lot of work to do tonight, but I think that getting some more clarification is imperative to our work. Um, I also attended the town council meeting and came out of it very unclear as to our positionality as a group. Um, and I too heard Mr. Balkelman state that he did not intend to implement all of our recommendations within this fiscal budget. And so I just want to know, like, I need more clarity as to what as to what that actually means. I think before moving forward at all, because I think that that really will frame what which track we take moving forward. Um, and I also heard, because like I stated before, this is very new to me dealing with the town budget. But I did also hear one of the town council members state that they don't have the ability to raise funds in any particular. Um, budget area, but they do have the ability to reduce it. And so the only person who has the ability to set the precedent for what our funds will be is Mr. Balkelman and he will set that. And so like he's here in this meeting with us now and the budget is coming out soon. So I think that he hopefully and probably has some idea in his mind as to what the precedent will be that he will set for them to decide upon. And I think that that information is imperative to our work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker and um, Ms. Pat. I kind of agree with um, uh, with her that we should, let's um, discuss this first before we move forward to the press. I know, you know, it's important, but for me, I really want to know, uh, Mr. Buckman, what you're thinking in terms of what you think you'll be recommending to the council because from what um, Ms. Tashina raised, I really do not want to waste my time if some of our proposals are not going to make it to the town council. I need to know now, so. What I'd, what I'd like to offer the group to, con to consider at this point is um, one, I'd like to invite Mr. Bachman if you, if you are able to, to stay with us during this conversation, but um, I wanna go back to our last meeting. We, we said we wanted to have this conversation about community responders. 
and community responder models. We, we said we wanted to have this conversation as a way of beginning to, cr to uh, create a proposal that might be something uh, concrete for the town uh, and through Mr. Bachman to consider. We, we said that people on our group uh, did respond in writing. Some did not respond in writing because they felt the venue was um, would be better if it was in a, in a dialogue format and discussion format. So we set it up for that. I, I wanna compel the, the group to think about this very seriously. Um, one of our charges is to come up with recommendations to the town manager that would impact, influence, and direct the budget to do certain things. And it's our responsibility to send the message. And I think if we don't send the message, then we're, we're floating in air. I'm just, I'm just telling you as a, this is my own uh, opinion from experience with the town and, and other venues, but also we have the capacity and we have the knowledge and we have the expertise to create something. I think if we go on the, um, the premise that um, we're waiting to hear what other people are gonna say about what we might do, I, I, I think we're, I think it's backwards. I think we, we should take charge of our message. We should take charge of what we wanna say. That's our job. I think we ought to create something that sends a very clear message to the town about what's important and um, then give it to the town manager. And, you know, with all due respect, the town manager has to respond to us. And I said this before, I said, our, you know, you wanna find out where the, where the priorities are in, a, in the town or any organization, you follow the money. And I, and I think if we come up with something that's going to be um, concrete and meaningful, and in collaboration with our consultants that we've hired, we ask for this support, we're getting it. I don't want us to lose sight of what our mission and charge is here to send that forward. That's, that's my comment on it. Um, I see hands are up. I, I want to, you know, I'll, I'll entertain those comments, but I just don't want us to get lost in the weeds here. Um, even though I'm not dismissing certain, of, you know, People, people are pointing to things they want to hear from Mr. Bachman, and certainly, Mr. Bachman, you can respond. But I want to help us keep our focus. I don't know who had the hand up first. I think it may have been Ms. Walker and then Ms. Ms. Ferreira. Is that correct? Ms. Walker, yes. please. Mm -hmm. um, yes, thank you, Mr. Wiley. I just wanted to say I'm still very invested in this work. It's not that I'm invested in this work, but I think that that is the reason why I want an answer to this question, because I do still intend to you know commit to the charge that i signed up for and to continue to finish my work but i also want to know realistically what to expect out of the work because i'm putting in a lot of work as is everybody else and and uh, in res in respect to our consulting group they're also putting in a lot of work and our community members are putting in a lot of work and everyone's putting in a lot of really hard emotionally draining work into this and i want to know that there is going to be a result a substantial result and that if we are going to be nickel and dimed we can at least make the most of our nickels and dimes if we can anticipate that that is going to happen but if we don't even know that that's going to happen and we're going to make this huge robust model that's going to have no funding then what is the point of that rather than if we know we're only going to have a tiny bit of funding we can figure out what we can realistically do with that money to make change because I just don't see the point if we have somebody who is amongst us right now that can give us a better idea of that, what the point is in not just having that information. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Certainly well heard. Ms. Ferrer, did you have your hand up? Yeah. I'm looking around. Did someone else have their hand up after Ms. Yeah, I did. And, and then Ms. Bowman. Ms. Ms. Ferrer and then Ms. Bowman. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, obviously I understand we have a, a lot to discuss, you know, but I guess, uh, Mr. Wiley, I, the thing is, is that people aren't clear in terms of 
you know, what the, the, you know, what the process is going to be. And I know Mr. Bachman talked about it last week. It seemed that it, as if things were resolved, but then there was a presentation by Mr. Bachman. I wasn't there. Ms. Bowman was there and Ms. Alicia Walk were there and they're, they're confused about what was presented. So I think what we could do is like, you know, put at least like, let's say, you know, let's take another five minutes, five to 10 minutes to kind of get into this, you know, and see what Mr. Bachman has to say and then we can go from there. You know, I can be the timekeeper so that we can hopefully yeah. kind of move move forward from there. But I think it's important to have Mr. Bachman, you know, respond to this because, like I said, I wasn't there, but Ms. Bowman Ms. and Ms. Walker was there, and they have some some questions. So we, we should devote a little bit of time to it. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Ferreira and, and Ms. Bowman and Ms. Walker. You know, uh, full respect to what you're saying, Mr. Mr. Bachman is still here. I did ask you to stay on to stay. because I think we could probably get into this in, in terms of our particular discussion around CRESS. Um, I'd like to open it up for you to respond to us at this point. If uh, you can offer some clarification. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Wiley and everyone. Um, yeah, so um, um, what I was, I tried to sit, I had very short time to respond earlier. So I respect the questions that Ms. Bowman and Ms. Walker, and every, all the, all your members are asking, because I think it is uh, important questions to answer. Um, and I come to these meetings, every one of your meetings, because I value the work that you're doing. And also because I'm educating myself, quite frankly, and I need to understand more of um, what, what, how you're coming to your conclusions, not just the conclusions you're coming to. I don't know the conclusions you're coming to at this point. I don't know what the proposals are. So I don't know what to respond to, to say, what, um, if you told me, here's what we want, I can give you, an, I could give you some, say, well, okay, that I, I understand what you're asking for. Let me go back and work on that. Um, but I really don't know where you're headed. And I think what you're saying to me is like, well, we don't know what to put together because you're not telling me how much, how much money we have. And I think that's sort of the, sort of where we are on this. Um, and what I think we said, talked last week, is if, um, I had suggested that you say the structure, the general structure that you think we should have, and maybe we get a plan to move in that direction. Maybe we just don't jump all in one budget, or maybe we have a, uh, I, I see Northampton is sort of doing a sort of implementation plan or strategic plan for how we get to where we need to go. This is a fundamental shift in how the community sees, sees um, community safety. It's a really important discussion it's gonna be, and I do think it will be a reallocation of resources and how we move in that direction it doesn't just happen uh, really quickly, it, but it has to happen quickly. I mean, that sounds contradictory, but it, but it's, you know, there are certain constraints that we have as a community within the budget. Um, but, you know, this is a high, it's been identified as a high value for the council. I'm personally um, invested in making the changes um, that, that I'm hearing, but I need more, I'm listening to you to find out where your direction, what direction you're moving in. Um, so I don't know what you're, where you're, where you're settling as a committee. So if that, if you could have that discussion about like, here's where we're settling, that would be very instructive to me. I have a question just related to that, Mr. Bachman, maybe in, in, in support of, of Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Bowman and, um, Ms. Walker. Are you able at this point to convey to this, to, to this working group that, re, let's say re, regardless of, of what proposal we put forward, that there will be a, a, a serious and um, I don't know what else other adjective to put on this response to funding what we are proposing from the town council? I don't know if that's, that's an inappropriate question or not, but I think that's what people are asking. If we're gonna do this work, and we'll do the work, we're gonna do the work. But if, as we do the work, I'm, I'm hearing people say, well, you know, we, we build this house and then nobody lives in it. That, that's kind of the, my, my, my metaphor. But if we build a house, is the town council able to tell us that somebody will reside in that house? And in, in some way, or is that some, as a question you can't answer at this point? Um, I know there will. I I know there will be a house built. 
I can, I know we're planning for that. I don't know how big your, you guys are coming in with in terms of what you, ser you know, seriously, um, when you say serious commitment, I don't know what that means uh, from your perspective. Serious commitment to me, and then I, I will go to Ms. Bowman, mm -hmm. a serious commitment to me is taking in all of the information that we've gathered narratively and uh, concretely through other forms of data uh, receipts and our, our, our council and our, mm -hmm. our consulting group that says, this is what we need to, to proceed alternatively in this town to do it. And, and I think what's, what's behind this question is if it doesn't, if, if the cost of it, let me just go right, if the cost of it seems prohibitive to the town and the town is not able to move in that direction, then I think that's where some of our, our membership and maybe even some members of our, our people, citizens in our town might say like, we did all this work. And even though we said we needed A, the town is not willing to even consider A, but um, it might be B. That's, if, I don't know, let me go to Ms. Bowman because I, I, I don't wanna occupy that, that sit on that question too much. Ms. Bowman. So, okay. I feel like at this point, you've been to so many meetings, Mr. Bachman, that you have some idea of what you're going to put towards a budget for this group. Even if it's not in finalized, you have some idea. And I, for me, it doesn't even matter what, what position that you're in. What matters to me is, are we doing this work for nothing because you're going to throw out scraps left over after everybody else gets what they need? Or are you going to really look at what we're trying to do, even if it's uncomfortable for you, and actually go forward and recommend the things that, that are going to come down as to being recommended? Because the research is being done behind it. And... <clears throat> Um, the, the information is being done from, be, has been gotten from the co community members about what they are needing. They're directly asking their town to, to provide them with a necessary thing to make a, the community that is absolutely underrepresented in the town government, they're asking to feel, be in a safer place, to feel safer as residents of this town. And to like, I get that you're making recommendations and that, you know, the town committee is gonna have to approve and whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, like my expectation is that you put forth as many recommendations as you can, as uncomfortable as that may be, and as in an uproar, the town committee might get, get about it, but you should be putting forward, at you, like my expectation is that you're putting forward, like, if, like because of the fact that these are town members, that's, that committee we already know doesn't represent BIPOC community, period. Mm -hmm. We are So this group was put together, like you, I, I'm not, I'm as a member of the community, I'm, I'm not going to sit back and, and be like, oh, it's okay. You know, he put some of our stuff through, but you know, other things, you know, made him feel too uncomfortable. So he didn't put them through. Like, really? I'm not there. I'm not there. And, and I'm not there because that happens so much in this town. BIPOC community back down because white people feel uncomfortable and we're not getting our needs met and we're not getting simple safety things met, like safety needs met and it's not okay. It is absolutely not okay. I've been very lucky in this town and I've been very privileged in this town and I recognize that, but I've seen a lot of things in this town too. I've seen a lot of horrific things in this town and it needs to stop and people need to feel safe. People need to be able to reach out to 
to services and feel safe and not feel like they're going to get their kids ripped out of their homes, not feel like they're, you know, they're going to have somebody busting in their house and arresting people in their homes, like with, you know, because the police get to determine whether or not something's a crime because it looks like a crime and they get to determine, you know, what the law is under their idea, whatever. Like I just, we need to, we need to feel safe. And it's been too far and too long. Um, and that's why I'm really frustrated because I, I do, I really do feel like, you know, you're kind of buttering both sides of the toast and it's kind of, it's, it's really frustrating to me. Uh, let me unmute. So I know there's um, let me just go to Ms. Bowman, uh, Ms. Ms. Owen. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Bowman, is what I meant to say. And I'm going to go to Ms. Uh, Ms. Owen and then Mr. Vernon Jones for comments, please. Yeah, so I just want to amplify what uh, Ms. Bowman was saying. And I wanted to take it a step further and say that I know it's very uncomfortable to make these drastic changes to community safety services. But um, if these changes are not made, um, the distrust between BIPOC residents here, it's just going to grow. And a tremendous amount of work has gone into people being uncomfortable and sharing their testimonies into filling out surveys and sharing things that have been really triggering. And I can only speak for myself, but um, if I wasn't in a position of privilege, I would not be able to sit here and do as much work as this group requires for such a small stipend. And I, I don't know, it's just, I just hope that drastic changes can be made. And I understand that it's uncomfortable, but the same discomfort is discomfort that has been felt by the BIPOC community for decades. If Thank not. you, Ms. Owen. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, Mr. Bachelman, you were here for a discussion we had where we established as a group that we did not want some small pilot program, that we wanted a very substantial transformative change. Yeah. And I understand that you can't promise to write us a blank check at this point, but I think our question is, are you committed to funding a transformational change in public safety services in Amherst in the next budget? So if you say, oh, like, Mr. Wiley? Go right ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So, it, it, so that's what I was going to want to go to is like, let's talk about what we're really talking about. We're talk, when we talk about people is that's the cost. That's the investment that we're talking about is, is hiring people to do things. Um, and the last number I heard were 10 people to fund for a community responder program. If, is that where we where the last conversation I heard to in order to have basically two people on the streets at all the time, at all times. Is that was that the sort of place where that, we were going? I don't think that's we made a decision people. about 10, but we yeah. were uh, that, certainly talking that the, six yeah. to 10 at least. If you would, yeah, if you'd be so kind to, to raise your hand because I don't want people to talk over each other. Thank you so much. Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Ferreira. I, I don't know that we made a decision about 10, mm -hmm. but we said, we're not talking a pilot. We're talking a minimum of six and more likely 10. That's the way I understood the conversation. Ms. Ferreira, then Ms. 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 Uh, Ms. Pat. Yeah, I mean, I think my, you know, and when, what we were talking about is just, I don't know if we're there in terms of the numbers. We just need to make sure that it has the numbers of staff people, it has the resources in terms of vehicles, equipment, training, and that it has a space. So it's going to be a lot of different things. It's not just going to be people. You see what I'm saying? So I can't say right now six to 10 people or six to 12 people. You know, but it's it's about it's going to be more than you know. It could be you know I don't know. We've been looking at I've been looking at some of the research where it's like a million dollars to 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 fund something like that. Oh, it's like five five hundred to a million dollars. I mean, do we have that in the budget to fund something that's going to be fully resourced and staffed? Mr. Ber Mr. So, yeah. So even at $500,000 on day one, July one would be a huge challenge for us. We are currently at about a $165,000 deficit in our current town budget. Um, so, um, so getting to 500,000 on day one would be a challenge. Um, you know, as, you, as you're talking, I'm thinking, well, how would we do this? And again, we would need an implementation plan. Um, it, maybe it doesn't happen on day one. Maybe it happens three months in or six months in. That that makes the budget for FY22 easier to manage because you only have to fund 
you know, half the year, for instance, and then actually maybe we get there and then next year we can fund it for the full year because we can make that room. So I'm just trying to think problem solve. How do we get to it? To me, it's, a, it's it sounds very, I have to fix, figure out the numbers because the, the budget is a numbers and it has to be balanced. Um, and so that's where this is a very helpful conversation to me because I'm sort of gauging what the numbers are that, that you're, you're, you know, and, and if we're looking at, you know, I hear what I'm hearing is 500,000 to a million dollars to set up a program. I'm, you know, I'm hoping I have confidence that we'll be able to say this will um, meet, this is what the research has shown. This is what the working group has come up with. Um, you know, the council will be asking me questions about, well, how many calls will this group be responding to? I don't know the number. I don't know how many calls will be diverted from police. I need all that. Kind of, I still, we need, still need to do some of that work. But that, if I'm, I just want to understand the, the scale that you're talking about. Um, and if it's the six to 10, 500,000 plus, that's very helpful to me. Um, and I will go back to work and see what, what we can do. To, I would love to be on the same page exactly with where, where, the, where the working group goes, where, where you settle. It would be my ideal situation. Um, whether I can fiscally get there is going to be the challenge. Ms. Walker. And then Ms. Pat. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, so, Ms. Pat, did you have a your hand up before Ms. Walker? I see some hands are on the screen. I don't see some people on the screen. So were you next, Ms. Ms. Pat, after Mr. Bach? I've been raising my hand for a while. It's okay. Go ahead ahead. You go ahead, then I'll go to Ms. Walker. So I believe either last week or the week before, I had raised the issue of free cash that the town has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, I don't think we should even be discussing whether we can fund it or not. We need to really ask ourselves, where is our priority in this town? How much can we place on human life? And like one of us has stated, this, the town council don't represent BIPOC community. So there is money there to fund whatever we recommend. So the discussion should not even be about if we have the money or not. The discussion is, how do we value BIPOC community in this town? To be the discussion. I don't buy the idea that we don't have the money to fund it. Let's get money out of other projects. I feel that the work we're doing is more important than most of the project that, that is being proposed. That's where I'm coming from. And I did mention that in terms of the uh, staffing, I had um, suggested 10 to 12, and I have my reasoning because I did my own research too. And that's how I came up with those numbers. But there are more items to fund besides staffing, vehicles and other stuff to fund. So we need to get money from the town. There is money, people pay high taxes in this town. Let's shift priorities. This should be one of the top priorities in this town. If people really want to support BIPOC community, word is cheap. We would like, I would like to see action. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Walker was next, then Ms. Bowman, and then Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Walker. Hi, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. You're on mute. Sorry, it says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. You sound okay. like you're in a, in a um, well, but so... we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. OK, um, so I just wanted to say that like in terms of the specifics of the program, I know that it matters once we finalize our project, but I think just to have a general idea helps guide our work moving forward. And so, um, I mean, it would be great to have 10 positions. It would be great to have more positions filled, but I think there's a huge difference in if, if the town is willing to set aside 80K for our work as opposed to if the town is willing to find a million dollars in the budget for our work, because then that, that would really, that's really what determines how many positions we can have. 
Because if, but if you're saying that whatever amount we determine is the amount that you're willing to fund, that's a completely different question because then once we complete the research and we say, okay, actually our research shows that we need 14 positions for this town based off of the research. And then you're just gonna find the money for that is a big difference than, as, than if you know right now that you can only find wiggle room for 80K, then we don't have to, to put out that, that projection because it's not going to be funded and it's not going to happen that way. And so then we can put out a more realistic mm -hmm. projection of how this would actually work and how this would actually look so that it's not just setting up something for failure or setting up a huge model that then isn't funded and then needs to be revisited and remolded to fit what is actually our budget. Um, and so I think we talked about the taxes, we talked about the town savings. And so I think it really has more to do with the town's willingness to find money for this in their budget than it has to do with our work in figuring out what it is that the BIPOC community needs. Because yes, we know that we need to do that and that is our charge and that's what we're working on. But, but we still really need to know if our recommendations are gonna be funded because I also just want to remind everybody that we're talking about the community responder program right now. What about the multicultural center? What about the youth center? What about all the other recommendations that we want to implement? Like, is this the only one that's gonna be paid attention to? So is this the only thing we should ever focus on this entire time? We need to know this information. And I think Mr. Bachelman, I think you can give us a better answer to that because I think we're getting very general answers. And like, I need to know, is this something we're gonna be willing to dip into our savings? Because you did say at one point that that was a possibility, but if, that, if you are the person to make that decision because ultimately you set the precedent. So you are the person that's going to set the example for everybody as to how much money you're willing to put to offer out as a recommendation to the town council. This is what I'm, I'm feeling comfortable with and they're gonna meet you because they already said they can't raise funds. That is not their job. So they can't even meet you back with, no, we want to put more. That's not even a possibility. That's not even an option. So I think we, like, I still think we need that information in a more clear cut way rather than a question to a question. Thank you, Ms. Walker. I'm gonna to go to Ms. Bowman and Wait, then- Wait, uh, Mr. Wiley, just time, time keeper, just timekeeper, just making sure that I do my role, which is it's seven o'clock, just get letting everyone know. All right, I know we're doing the dialogue, but I just wanna make sure people are keeping- Thank you, I appreciate that. The price. I, I, I appreciate that, thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Then uh, you, we opened it up, so I, I will, Respectfully go to, to Ms. Bowman and, and Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones, and then we, we will shift. Is that okay? Ms. Bowman. So one of the things that, that um, I was thinking about when Pat, but Ms. Anabaka brought up um, the cannabis tax um, that's happening is like, again, a lot of BIPOC community end up being arrested before it all became legal. Let's put it back into this community. Like there's another place where you can say, hey, no, we, you know, people's lives have been affected by the fact that now that we've made this legal and people have lost a lot in their lives. They have lost a lot in their lives from being arrested from, for marijuana charges. And now it's like, you know, legal. So, that's another reason to put it back into the BIPOC community, put mm -hmm. at least some of that back into the BIPOC community specifically. And, you know, again, the school system. So, mm -hmm. so money there, but, but like, like Ms. Walker said, you have a hard decision, Mr. Bachelman, because you have to show, <clears throat> you have to show that even though a lot of people may get angry at you, you have to show us, hey, this is what they need to accomplish, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, <laughs> and this is what it's going to cost. And we need to find this. We need, you know, the money needs to come from, you know, all these different places. Everybody can do a little less, you know, on, on in these different avenues, but it needs to happen. It really does. And, um, you know, again, there's also there's also the savings account. This this is this this year this past the year shall that I shall not mention.
are. You froze, Miss Bowman. Um, You're freezing, Miss Bowman. And a lot of people need to feel uncomfortable for for this change to happen. And and like the, like I said, it's not like there's a lot of comf a lot of comfy. Miss Bowman, you keep freezing. Maybe you want to shut off your video. Yeah, we need live to live in their box, and not, but. Call the action. This is Miss Bowman. Can you shut down your video and make your your final comments? I want to move on to Miss to another comment before we, we continue our discussion, but we're not hearing you, unfortunately. You're muted. You're muted, Miss Bowman. Yeah. You're muted. I'm gonna. I'll come back to you. I'm gonna. Something's not happening right there. I don't know. Are you ah. unmuted now? Okay. Now you're frozen. Because, because I, my whole thing just crashed. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to move to Mr. Vernon Jones. I think, you know, um, we have. Yeah. It's and I'll come back to you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, well, I support what other people have been saying about the importance of the money and some of the possible sources for it. But let's not forget that we are also talking about taking over some of the work that has previously been done by the police and doing it in a community responder program. Um, and mm -hmm. there are a good many cities and towns who are doing that by taking money out of the police budget and putting it into social services. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I mean, just as for example, uh, even a modest 10% cut in the police budget would give us half a million, uh, which combined with some cannabis and free cash, you know, maybe we get close to a million and we can start doing some serious work. Uh, but I don't think it makes sense to try to do this without a meaningful reduction in the police budget. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um... Ms. Bowman, are you back with us? Because you'll be our last comment person before we move on. Okay. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Let's uh, thank you, Ms. Ferreira, for um, you know keeping track of that time piece. We opened up that discussion to try to get some some clarity on a question to you know for Mr. Bachelman to answer. One of the, you know, our agenda item was to talk exactly about Cress and to uh, get more into the, the concrete details of what we, um, what we were thinking about in terms of potentially moving toward a proposal. And in light of that, uh, uh, Ms. Ferreira and, and I came up with a a plan for how to have that discussion this evening. We had planned an basically an hour and 15, hour and a half time to begin that discussion to put some meat on the bones of our previous discussion, which was, was hopefully lead to um, us coming up with the, the basics for a proposal that might we might in, uh, move forward as a recommendation to the town, in addition to what we are learning from the um, Seven Generations um, Movement Collective. We, we took a moment to, to introduce this and basically, you know, our plan was to have um, Miss, uh, Miss Ferreira and me facilitate a conversation 
based on our chart that uh, was created originally by Mr. Vernon Jones, and we did a straw poll on that. We did get some uh, uh, some responses to that, some in writing, others were not in writing. So we wanted to have this discussion this evening to uh, allow people who did not have a chance to respond in writing to respond verbally. And we would include these items in our, our as a part of our input in our, our, in our collective response. And what we did was we, we, we took the questions uh, from each of the sections that were in the, uh, in the chart and put together, you know, presented the questions in each section. And then also in aggregate talked about uh, where our, our leanings were in terms of agreeing leading to disagree uh, and no leaning at all, with the understanding that some people did not have a, res a chance to respond to that in writing. So that's, that's not a complete uh, total there necessarily. And we highlighted those things in, in yellow as a way of saying, look, we spent a lot of time on some of these things and there's, it's heavily weighted in one direction or the other so that we might spend less time on these things and begin to move ourselves forward in a way to sort of start creating the framework for a proposal uh, in terms of, of, of CRESS that we might incorporate in our information that's going to the town. So it's structured with, uh, based on the, on, the, on the chart, CRESS questions one through three, and then you see what the uh, leaning to agree, disagree, uh, no leaning. And uh, Ms. Ferreira and I, you thought that maybe given we spent a lot of time on that one section last time and we didn't get very far, but there is a strong leaning there. And if you go down and you continue to scroll through, um, if you have that document on your own, you'll see where we highlighted other things. It doesn't necessarily th this actually question six should be highlighted as well but i it, it sort of missed my highlighter but we, we were trying to highlight where we had a strong ag agreement and if there were some folks who had no leaning or didn't have a chance to respond that we'd allow them to speak first and and comment on on those things the whole goal of this of this exercise would be to move us forward to the point where we could begin to establish some foundation for a proposal we might put forward to the town with respect to alternative uh, services for public safety. So Ms. Ms. Ferreira, um, any other comments? And we are, we're, we're literally well into this. We've got about, you know, even if I suspended the last piece of our meeting, we've got about 20 minutes to, to begin this conversation. Comments? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just important for us to have this discussion, uh, Mr. Wiley. So I think, you know, can you all hear me? Because it's saying my internet is unstable. I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, so I think what's important is just to to have the time. So I think for me, even though... You're on mute. Yeah, you're on mute. You can't hear me? I, I, you are frozen. You're going in and out again. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'm saying, you know, for us to just um, spend the time now and then spend some time, you know, in the next meeting to, to get to all of this. Okay. Let, let's move forward with that because I, I think this, this is important because it feeds into exactly what we're talking about in terms of getting something in place so that our message as a group is is clear um whatever recommendations we're making around finance around programmatic issues around whatever we have to be able to articulate that in a strong fashion so that uh, you know we do honor all the work that's been done by our, you know folks in our community uh, it's our responsibility to do this so let let's just go if you if you if if I may, Ms. Moyson, if you can go right back to questions one through three, I want to make a comment on that a little bit further down. Bowman has her hand raised. Okay, I went off screen, I'm sorry. Oops, sorry. 
Ms. Bowman? I can't see her. Yeah. So Hi. I'm kind of confused because I feel like there's been there. I I feel like throughout the meeting, everybody's been wanting to go back and have like make sure that that Mr. Bachelman answers this question in a way that's clarified to us. And I feel like there's too many people in the group who are not satisfied with his answer. And that um, I think I think at this point, we may even want to take a vote to see if we want to put, push other things to the side right now and get this answer. Because this really does pertain to a couple things for me personally. It pertains to the amount of energy that like I'm going to put towards this. Like I, I've invested in this because I, I feel like something is that there's potential for something really good to come out of this. But I'll tell you, like I, I if I have to just sit back and just agree with everything else that everybody's saying, I'm gonna have a really hard time as, as to whether or not I want to even like participate. It really does come down to that for me, and. I really think that, you know, after the last round of like questions and like, we're trying to figure this out, you just, Mr. Wiley, you just skipped over and was like, okay, well, now we're going to the next thing. And I don't understand why it's not a consensus. It's not a group of us saying, okay, no, we actually need to stay here in order to move on to the next thing. And I, and I have heard that a number of times. So I feel like this needs to go to a vote at this point as to whether or not we move on or we get the answer, we, we have this, we have this discussion out with Mr. Bachman to figure out like, you know, to get our answer satisfied in a way that I feel like we deserve being part of this group. I could comment on that. Did anyone have a, have a comment on it? My, co my comment is this, I, 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 I go back and this is, Ms. Bowman, I, I hear you clearly and directly. <laughs> Ms. Walker, I hear you clearly and directly. You're, you're asking Mr. Mr. Bockelman as town manager to commit to um, what we're trying to do as a, as a group and to be able to say, um, in advance of anything we, we say based on the work of the seven generations um, movement collective and the group that's been working for three and a half months together that we're just saying, will you support whatever we put forward to you regardless of the cost? And I don't wanna speak for anyone on this committee but um, if there's a commitment to that, that has to come from the, the, the town manager to say, yes, I will commit to anything this group is gonna put forward, regardless of the cost in the interest of safety, especially for BIPOC folks in our community, then um, yes, I'm willing to do that. Or if there's, there's two a, pieces of this, if that's just, happen. it's just two, there's the other piece of this. So we put something, whatever we put forward, that gets advanced to the town. Okay. And then it, it's at a whole different level. And this gets back to our question about whether the town was committed to the work, the, its own commitment to, to, to BIPOC people and diversity, equity, and inclusion and whether or not um, uh, they were going to, to, to fund in anything like this. It sounds like to me, and if I'm speaking wrong, you know, you will let me know, but I believe strongly that our, regardless of Mr. what Mr. Bachelman says, I'm, I'm less interested in what Mr. Bachelman has to say. And I don't mean, I mean this with all respect. I'm more interested in what we have to say 
as a group about what this community needs based on what we know and put it out there and put a price tag on it. And if the if Mr. Bockelman and the town decides to say, well, I don't know, I don't think it's a waste of time as much as it is we've done our due diligence and we've done our work as a committee to come up with the best possible recommendation for our town. It, you know, I, I hear what Ms. Bowman, Ms. Walker and others are saying, you know, well, if we do all that work, it's for nothing. Well, maybe it's not for nothing. Maybe it begins a whole different surge or energy. That's my only thought about it. And I'm, I'm willing to, uh, this, is, this is our group and I'm, I'm willing to work with this group. But the fact that we, you know, we have these, these things weighing on us right now um, is we're, we're stuck. We're, we're stuck and we're stuck. If we can't move beyond the question to Mr. Bockelman, then I go back to Ms. Bowman and said, how do you want to proceed? Um, because it's, it's important that we get something to people um, that we've had major contact with. I don't even know who was next up there. I see three hands. Was it, who was it? Oh my goodness, I was, I was talking so much, I forgot. I was first. Bowman was first, yeah. Ms. Bowman who? was first. Ms. Bowman, Ms. Bowman, yeah. Bowman, and then who? Then I'm next, then, then, then Ms. Ms. Walker. Oh, it goes right across the screen. Okay, Ms. Bowman, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Walker. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Bowman. Okay, so I don't, I, this, I think this, um, I'm not asking for something to be put aside. I'm asking for something to be addressed so that we can actually fully um, figure out how we're going to move forward. Funding mm -hmm. is essential for us to move forward. And if we're going to present something and say, no, this, we need a million dollars for this thing. And then Mr. Bachman is going to go to the committee and be like, they need a million dollars, but I budgeted them for 500,000. That basically we start at square one because we now have to reallocate how we're doing the work that we're doing. Um, and what, you know, like the point that Mr. Vernon Jones made about like, we're taking, we're trying to take over services that we deem unnecessary for police to do. They should not be getting more money. They should be getting less period. That's it, no more discussion. They're not doing those services anymore. And I just, I don't understand why we can't get a straight answer. I, I, I need a straight answer. I need an answer. I need a, we're going, I will put through anything you ask for. And we will, you know, and then you will explain why you need what needs, you know, why this is this is the amount needed, or you're gonna tell us that you're not, you do not plan to put forward all of the requests that we're gonna ask for, and we need to know that ahead of time. And okay, so, you know, I'll put 50 50 percent of whatever you ask for. I will support 50 percent of it. That's what I will bring to the town committee. Like. Because I, that plays in my head over and over again. I do not plan on putting through every all their recommendations. That goes through my head. I, when I heard that, I was like, "Wow, okay, that's how that's how this is happening." All right, that's that was very clear. You know, I don't know if you need to take a moment to go back and hear that yourself, but that's what I heard when I listened to the the you speak about it and speak about our committee. And so that's, a, that's problematic for me because that means that you already intended not to support us. Uh, Ms. Ferreira was next and, um, and then Ms. Walker and then uh, Mr. Bachman. Well, I mean, for me, you know, I do wanna hear from Mr. Bachman and, and kind of here again, because for me, what I was hearing from him the last time was that he was saying that we could put together what we wanted to recommend. And that's why it's important for us to go get to the point where we do talk about what we want. You know what I'm saying? Because the thing is, is that we're going to have to figure that out. And, and like, we're all on board that we're going to have to find that money somewhere, right? So it's defunding. So those are the things that we have to recommend, right? The money is going to come from the police because a lot of what we're recommending is going to be, is, is going to, the, the police aren't going to be doing those services anymore. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's the thing that's the quandary right now, right? We're, we're we want to know where the funding is coming from, but we haven't gone to the point to say this is where what we need, <laughs> you know. So, I, I, you know, 
I'm at the point that I want to talk about what we need and we need to concrete. We, we, we have to say that concretely too. I mean, I want to hear from Ms. Wagner, but we need to get to that point of just talking about the program. And I guess every time we get to this point, we stall. So I, I do, I do want us to move forward, right? But I'm also I'm I'm good with what Ms. Bowen said. Let's take a vote then. You know, if people aren't aren't at that point, I'm at that point where I need to move on. I want to move on. I want to find out what our recommendations are, right? I, and that's where I'm at. So I think we want to take a vote because right now I feel like we're just stuck, you know. So I want to hear from Mr. Bachman. I want us to take a vote, and I want us to go right or left or, or you know keep moving. Uh, Ms. Walker. And then Mr. Bachman. Um, sorry, I'm gonna make it short because I also want to hear from Mr. Bachman. Um, I agree with with Tashina and Ms. Ferreira, but I and, and I do want to move forward and I and I don't like the fact that we get stuck every time, but I do think that we need this information to move forward and we could have moved moved forward like 30 minutes ago if we got just a straight out answer from Mr. Mr. Bachman. So I don't think it's fair that we're 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 putting the assumption out that we're stalling because we're asking questions because these are very reasonable questions for us to have. And I think that we can just get a straight out answer because this is in regards to a meeting that happened on Monday night. So these things all just recently came up for me. These weren't questions that I had before. And so I didn't anticipate these things earlier, but I, these things were said in a town committee meeting by the town manager who sits in our meetings and has the ability to dictate the successfulness of our work. So I think we deserve an answer to that and a straightforward answer. And it can be a short, simple answer that's not asking us another question to our question and then we can move forward. But we, I didn't get any answers. We just spent 30 minutes talking about it without any answers. So I think that's the, the stuck part right now. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Um... So, Mr. Bachman, you were the last in the queue. So, I don't recall saying those words, Ms. Bowman and Ms. Walker. I will go back and listen to that. Um, I trust that that I must I must have said that because you heard it and you both heard it independently. So, I will go back and listen to exactly what that was. So, um, I yeah. So, I, I I don't know. I don't remember exactly what those words were. So. Um, I know you don't want to have a question to a question. I want to put as much as we can towards the programs. I don't know. I can't just say whatever you ask for, I'm going to support because I have a, a I have to build a I have to construct a budget that's with that that works that that's balanced. So I I'm trying. I want to get to where at where you're comfortable and what I'm walking away with. From I felt like we've got some really solid numbers that I can go start working on, figure out how to make that work. Um, so um, I don't want to, I feel, you know, I'm not trying to dodge or anything like that. Um, so I, I want this, this is a high priority, um, um, and, but I can't say yes, whatever you come up with, I'm going to say yes to. Um, I have to build a sustainable budget that's available year to year and that we can build on. So it's, it's, that, so it's in the budget from forever. Um, so I don't know if that's, a, that's, that's, I'm sure that's not a satisfactory answer to you, but that, that's where I have to be right now. Let me, let me just go back. I, I, let me go back to, um, excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Um, did you have, I wanted to make a closing comment on this, Mr. Vernon Jones, you wanna go forward and then, then I'll comment. Yeah, I just wanna make sure we don't create any misunderstanding with what was put up on the screen for questions one through three. I believe what's there is, now, is no longer something we support. I think we have had a consensus that we support a 24 seven community responder program with adequate vehicles, equipment, training, supervision, and support. And I actually think it might be helpful if we would ask the town manager to come back to us with an estimate of what that might cost. Well, 
if, if I may, and thank you for that. And, and I think one of the, this is where I, I think we, 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 we missed the mark in, in part at this meeting, because that very thing was something we would, we would have been able to, to jump into and get to pretty quickly. Well, I'd be willing to make a motion with that, to that effect right now, if you want me to. Well, um, let me, let me, let me go back because what preceded your, your, your motion, and I, if I may, just be, before we, we go to that, was we had um, three people, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Bowman, Ms. Walker, all asking for us to take a, you know, a vote as a committee as to whether or not we wanted to go forward with this discussion. I'm not sure, I don't wanna frame the question uh, for the vote, but that um, how to go forward. I do see a purpose and a, and a um, you know, in, in your motion, you know, certainly Mr. Vernon Jones. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Wiley. Um, that's not really what we're asking. We we're just asking for, we we're just asking for clarification on a question. I, I, know. Think, I think at this point we're clear and we can move on. Um, and I, I'm hoping that next week or through an email, Mr. Bachelman will have listened to um, the meeting on Monday and that, he, you know, that he was at on Monday, specifically the part that had to do with our group. Um, it starts at hour 327, by the way, Mr. Bachelman. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then can, he can send an email or he can, you know, talk to us next week about it. But I think, you know, at this point, um, we're, we're satisfied, or at least I am satisfied with the information that he gave and we should absolutely move on. But, but I think we should, we should get other people's, um, you know, sentiment. Say. Yeah, everybody else should chime in whether they wanna move on or whether we need to continue you know, discussing this further, because if not, we're not going to get to the other, to the other part if there's still yeah, we'll come folks back that are resolved. Ms. Bowman, thank you. That, that's clarifying and clear. And, you know, I, I appreciate it. Ms. Pereira, thank you. I'm going to come back to Mr. Vernon Jones in a moment. Um, Ms. Ms. Owen? Um, I understand what everyone's saying about just having a clear question. However, I do think that we should move on just because in a way, the community safety working group, our charge is to work within the system. And part of us working within the system is meeting the deadlines. And I just really don't want our recommendations to not even make it to the budget by us not prolonging the conversation. So I think we should move forward. But I do understand the urgency of a more clear answer. So... Let me let me let me go back. We're we're just about at seven thirty, and I I do have to be off this call because I have a meeting at seven forty five that I have to attend. Um, we certainly can go on, uh, Ms. Ms. Owen. I don't want to suspend the conversation if it goes beyond it, but you can probably continue this. But um, there's there's three things there's three things I'm hearing. One is a there's a motion coming from Mr. Vernon Jones. I want to return to. There's a request for Mr. Um, Bachelman to um, uh, respond in more detail to the, um, the community safety working group. Um, and there's also, uh, it seems a need for us to continue and not continue, but begin actually this conversation about our alternative um, uh, public safety uh, programs that we're thinking about in the name of press. So I, those are the three things I'm hearing and I'd like to return to you, Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones, to see what it is, if, if you wanna restate that motion, if we could, we could take a vote on that in particular motion, uh, entertain that motion. Um, and then if that gets traction, then we can go back and ask Mr. Bachelman for um, a response and then have us all commit to uh, the piece that Ms. Ferreira uh, is speaking about, which is to really concretely get ourselves in place to present something to Mr. Bachelman and the town. So Mr. Vernon Jones. I mean, I'm, 
I'm willing to make a motion if people would prefer to have a consensus that yes, a 24 seven program is what we want. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to force the decision making process one way or the other, but I'll do whatever you ask as chair. Well, the, you know, it's, it's a motion. So I'm gonna second the motion and then we'll see if there's any discussion about that from the group before we go forward. And then I'd like to return to the other two items. Is that okay? Oh, what? Shall, shall I, shall I state it as a motion? State it as a motion, yeah. Okay. yeah. I move that we decide that one of our recommendations is to establish in FY22 a community responder program that will provide unarmed, trained safety and social services to the town 24 seven with adequate vehicles, equipment, training, supervision, and support. And that we ask the town manager to bring us an estimate of what it will cost to fund such a program as soon as possible. I second that motion. Discussion of the motion. I mean, the only thing is, is, is that, Pereira. Uh, I, sorry, uh, yeah, I guess discussion, is that what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> no, I just did, you just surprised me. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't see your face and then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, I heard a voice. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Um, no, so I guess my thing is this though. I mean, we're, we're stating it as this is our recommendation. Are we there yet though, that that's our recommendation, I guess? You know what I'm saying? So. Well, this is what is slash would have been the first part of our discussion <laughs> around this had we had it. And I yeah. think this, we did not get there. Yeah. So we're, we're there. So if for all intents and purposes, Mr. Vernon Jones's motion is beginning that discussion that we were supposed to have an hour and a half ago. So I guess my thing would be tweak that. I don't know if we're ready to just say a recommendation. Can't we just say, you know, we, we, we're looking at right now to have a program that's 24 seven, that's fully resourced that, cause you know, we also have to have, you know, th that they have their a, a, a space to be housed in all of those things, but that we're looking at that and for him to look at how much a program like that would, would, would cost. But I wouldn't be comfortable just saying that that's our recommendation. I mean, we haven't flushed it all out yet. I'm happy to accept that as a friendly amendment. We can accept a friendly amendment and, and it was someone like to accept that uh, as, as second that amendment to the motion. I the motion. Ms. I second that. Ms. Ms. Owen. And um, let me just go straight to it. Would, uh, would the group be in favor of having us pursue that action with the, the, the town manager as amended? If yes, just raise your hand. Okay. Mr. Bachman, do you have any questions about what this, where this is going and what you need? No, I understand the motion. I'll get that information to you as soon as possible, well before your next meeting. Thank you. Ms. Walker, your hand is up. No, I was just raising it in favor of the motion. Oh, okay. I finally saw a hand. <laughs> and it was an easy one. Um, my second thing was that um, given that information coming back to us based on that motion, um, I would like for us to um, commit to a discussion about Cress as we had planned today and begin that conversation in earnest the next meeting. And um, if we could have agreement to that, I think it gets to the point that Ms. Ms. Ferreira was also making that we, we need to get something concrete in place. We have um, about three weeks or so to, to, to move forward. And I wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna miss or dismiss or have it evaporate the comments that are made by Ms. Bowman Ms. Walker, Ms. Ferreira, and others, that uh, we, Mr. Mr. Bachman, that we're looking for as much concrete and supportive response as we can from the town manager 
as this thing moves toward the town. We know we have a recommendations to make. So we're, we're gonna do that work. But I would, I would like for us to go directly into that conversation next week if we, if we could. Um, any objection to that? Mr. Vernon Jones? I have no objection, but if we're talking about discussing the whole uh, chart or grid or whatever that we had, that's more than Cress. And it I is, do yeah. think we need to have some preliminary, at least some discussion of other aspects besides Cress that are on that list. Well, there are. I mean, there was. Um, there okay, were, so we're talking about our commitment is to try to talk about the whole list. The whole list, but with the understanding that this is 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 more dynamic than just you know just the press list. Yeah. That you know we heard people talk earlier about um, you know community programs and those kind of things. This is it's 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 more dynamic than where it appears on the paper. Right. So yes, that that's our commitment. And you know, admittedly, I would say like we we may not get through that. You know, hopefully we will uh, cut into that very deeply, but the, the, the goal of this was to get to a point where we can bullet out some things that we want to have as a framework for a proposal that we could, we could put some numbers to um, and some recommendations to and a rationale for doing what we're saying we're doing and, and you know, have a compelling argument here. Um, that, that's, that, that's our work. So that, Ms. Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Ferreira. So just one more thing that I know that Mr. Wiley and I had discussed is just that for folks um, to just think about who might be willing to do, to have like a subcommittee to just think about like, you know, when we do have this discussion next week, just kind of taking some notes so we can build an, an outline, right? That we can share with the seventh generation because obviously they're, they're getting the data together. And so that then we have the data that backs up are, um, you know, what we've been discussing in terms of recommendations so that then we will have it in time to, to submit uh, by the budget deadline. Okay, so if there's some folks that are willing to do that, we can find that out at the beginning of next week's meeting. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Other comments? Well, thank you all. This is hard work, and uh, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm confident we're going to get there. It's this is not easy, it's not easy on any of us. And I think, um, you know, Dr. Shabazz talked about the kind of work that's going on in the community and how this is affecting all of us. Um, you know, as individuals working on it, there's a lot behind it, not just the, the numbers and the words, but the, it's a it's a very emotional charge we have to, to put forward. So. Um, you know, absent of any other uh, comments on that, um, I'd like to move forward. Um, let's see, where are we here? So thank you all. One of the things I'd also like to is to remind folks. Oh, Ms. You... Pat has her hand up. Okay, I'm sorry. I, did, I started talking and I looked at myself on the screen. <laughs> Ms. Pat, go ahead. I'm just reflecting on what everybody has said tonight, and I want to thank everyone. Having lived in this town for more than 36 years, how time has changed um, to have our younger generation doing the work that we've done in the past. If we were in the past, for those who spoke up tonight, would be seen as troublemakers. That to have BIPOC commi uh, committee to really speak their mind. I was just listening for admiration because that wasn't my experience. We, I've done all this in the past. And I, I hope this is a new change in this town that people actually have space to speak their mind and then not be uh, ignored or hushed or dismissed, um, I feel very encouraged as an elder in BIPOC committee, community. Thank you all. That's all I want to say. I, I chose not to talk a lot tonight because 
I am very happy to hear younger generation take on the work that some of us have been doing in this town for many, many years. And we were called troublemakers, which is all right with me. According to Rep. Uh, Lois, who passed away, it's a good trouble. Good and so um, I thought this is a very good meeting. People might think that we need to move forward. We don't have time. We have to uh, make the deadline. But these are very hard, important discussion that needs to come out to the open. It didn't surprise me that we're discussing this. Even before I joined this group, my network has said, but what is going to change now? It's just one, one of the checkbox lists, you know, to say that we've done it. So all this discussion did not surprise me tonight. So I think, I don't think it's a waste of time. It's a good thing that we discussed today. An action will tell in the future whether or not this discussion was worth it or not. That's all I want to say. Thank you all. I appreciate that, Miss um, Pat. And um, I, I think res respectfully, I, as I mentioned a moment ago, I'm going to have to be off because I have to join another thing. Unfortunately, I didn't anticipate it being 745, but it is. Um, so we have a couple of other items on the agenda, the um, upcoming events, the next meeting, and other topics and an adjournment. I would respectfully ask maybe if uh, Ms. Owen, you could take that over for the end. I want to say also before I leave, um, I want to echo what Ms. Pat is saying and uh, uh, that, you know, we're, we're at a critical point and some of these conversations are going to be hard. I hope, I hope we all are learning. From, I am. And I hope we all are learning from each other and, and from our community about what needs to happen here and that we you know, just take the learning forward. The other piece I want to say before I leave is that um, I would really encourage folks, uh, although we, you know, we will probably have the same two agenda items. We'll have an update from Dr. Dr. Shabazz and Seven Generations um, uh, Movement Collective and this Crest discussion next week. We'll anticipate the uh, response from Mr. Bachelman, but that we engage that fully. I would also suggest that if if you really feel you want something on the agenda, please, please articulate that and get it to Ms. Moyston. Um, I mean, speaking of deadlines, by, by one o'clock on Monday, I think some of those things, if, if we know they're coming up, we can engage them more fully and more purposefully. And I just don't want to, you know, have us miss an opportunity if something's on your mind. So that said, I'm going to have to respectfully uh, sign off. And Ms. Ms. Owen, if you don't mind, Con yeah. continuing this. I appreciate you and appreciate everybody. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So moving to the next item on our agenda, um, I guess I'll open up the floor if anybody has any upcoming events. Ms. Pat? If I could um, ask Ms. Morstein, if you don't mind sending the announcement for the um, League Women Voter um, uh, web, webinar or Zoom gathering tomorrow for people who might be interested in running for offices, especially to our you know young generation to attend tomorrow night. Maybe after the training, they might be inspired to run for office. We need to vote some people out of the office in order to make this town work well for everybody. Um, definitely. Does anybody else have any other upcoming events? Um, I have an event that I wanted to share with you all. Um, outside of the community safety working group, I do work with foster youth predominantly, oh, who will predominantly identify as BIPOC. And one of the biggest issues I've been facing in work is the mistrust with young people getting the vaccine. So I am working with UMass Medical to put together a vaccine info session and question A led by two BIPOC doctors. Um, I wanted to throw it out there with you all to see if you had any young people who are doubting the vaccine and just wanted to learn more. Uh, so moving to, I guess, moving to the next agenda item, next meeting date, does next Wednesday at 5.30 work for everyone still? 
Yep. <laughs> and then oof. other topics the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Um, so if no one has anything at this time, I'd ask somebody to make a motion to adjourn. A motion that we adjourn. Second day. Is that how this ends? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> that yes, for that last part. Okay. Thank you guys all. Um, and I'll see you guys next meeting. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice Bye, day. Everyone. Enjoy the warm weather tomorrow. And Brianna, thank you for thank sharing you. about that clinic and for doing that work. That's really good, good work. Yes, thank That's you, Brianna. Fun. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.